We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. sequence start. The engines are on. Four, three, two, one, zero. Sideways shaking was unbelievable. The vibration was so intense you couldn't see the instrument panel. I thought we'd had it uh, during the launch. If I were president of the United States of America, the first thing I would do is paint that house in Washington, D.C. red. Then I'd go inside and retrieve the United States Constitution out of the toilet. And I'm serious, because the United States of America has now become a fascist empire. The park bench. It was in flames and no firemen arrived. It was in flames and no cars stopped. to walk and so I did. Somehow deep inside I understood this action. He said, that's where it starts. This is where it ends. And I said, that's... There's growing concern among Americans about the size and the scope of the federal government and its infringement upon state and individual rights. If you're elected president, how do you plan to restore the Tenth Amendment, hold the federal government only to those enumerated powers in the Constitution, and allow states to govern themselves? Congressman, what's your answer for Brandy and Michael? Well, obviously it would take more than one individual, but the responsibility of the president would be to veto every single bill that violates the Tenth Amendment. That would be the solution. But because government is too big in Washington, D.C., it's run away. We have no controls of spending, taxes, regulations, no control in the Federal Reserve printing money. So if we want government, it, whether it's medical care or whatever, it's proper to do it at the local level as well as our schools. But there is no authority in the Constitution to do so much of what we're doing. There's no authority for them to run our schools, no authority to control our economy, and no, con no authority to control us as individuals on what we do with our personal lives. A new generation of surveillance drones could soon be watching us all from overhead. The Federal Aviation Administration is expected to announce plans to expand the use of domestic drones in American airspace. Eyes in the sky, similar to the unmanned aircraft that the United States has been using to target terrorists abroad. Here at home, the surveillance systems can be used to track terrorists or drug dealers or to find missing children or locate wandering Alzheimer's patients. Lots of different good uses, but the critics warn the use of drones presents a major threat to all of our personal privacy. Meantime, a newly discovered Air Force intelligence document leaked and posted online states, if drones capture surveillance footage of Americans incidentally, the data can be stored and analyzed by the Pentagon for up to 90 days. And that's not all. The Fox Report's chief correspondent, Jonathan Hunt, is with us. When, when are these drones likely to be flying, and how many of them might there be above our heads? Well, there's a growing number already, Shep, but according to the experts, and indeed the FAA itself, there could be as many as 30 
thousand of these kind of drones, 30,000 flying overhead within the next decade. Now, obviously, law enforcement uh, agencies love these drones, and they say they'll be able to save lives in things like hostage situations or search and rescue operations. But obviously, the privacy concerns are huge because they will in effect bring every single backyard in America into the authorities view you've always had an expectation of privacy in your own backyard you will no longer have it with with these there and there is essentially no real legislation currently written to curtail where they can go to limit what they can see that's the obvious concern Jim. the language on this document Jonathan uh, incidentally getting video of Americans doing something. And what, what does this mean? Well, for instance, one of these drones is up, say, heading down to the U.S.-Mexico border to check out the situation there. Or it's up looking over a traffic incident in uh, downtown Chicago. But if they're on their way flying to either of those incidents, they look down, it's, it records in your backyard footage, say, of a whole bunch of bags of fertilizer and some tomato plants. You're working on it. Are those really tomato plants? Are they marijuana plants? Are you getting that fertilizer for your garden? Or are you getting it to make bombs? They then have a reason, they say, to keep that footage, analyze it for up to 90 days, and start looking into all manner of things that you may or may not have been doing. Is, is there going to be a new rule about everybody building an extra bedroom? Yes, you cannot build an extra bedroom. Well, I thought you were going to have to, to allow a member of the government to live in the house with you. <laughs> no? That may be where we're headed. The judge probably knows better than me on that. It would probably better than I. It would probably be good, be good for housing. Housing starts. It'd be good yes. for construction workers. And Jerry Willis can address that one as well. We have everybody at the table here to sort out the entire situation. A member of government for everyone and a bedroom for all. Wow, wow. It's good and great welcome, now, John. Welcome to Monday. Drones for all. Thanks. Well, well. Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano is with They can't require us to build an extra bedroom, but I guess they can spy on us from ahead. Well, they can't spy on us from ahead. They really can't, can no, they? No, they can't. But they will. D did you see any legislation enacted by the Congress or signed by the President or any amendment to the Constitution? No. Answer, no. These are regulations in which bureaucrats gave themselves the authority to capture images of us in the privacy of our backyards and depending upon how low the drones fly, Jonathan can back me up, inside the home, if yep. the drone is able to see inside the home, and to retain and analyze and distribute amongst members of the government what they find. This is not permitted by the Constitution. It's not permitted by federal law. The Congress didn't vote on it. The president's been silent about it. Bureaucrats did it on their own. And this has been the case forever. And I know from working local television 15, 20, uh, longer than that ago, <laughs> If you, as a citizen, have a Looks reasonable like expectation of privacy, the government will commit the crime. Chef, this is very serious. It's one thing for the government to do it. It's another thing for the Defense Department to do it. Mm. The Defense Department cannot engage in any activity in the United States of America without an executive order from the president that must be published. So if the president has authorized the Defense Department, Jonathan spoke about the Air Force, to fly drones over anybody's backyard and we don't know about it, then the president and the Air Force have violated numerous federal criminal statutes. But nobody seems to much care. Nobody seems to, to very much care. Why isn't the Congress up in arms? Same Congress that let the president bomb Libya is going to let his Air Force spy in our backyards and like potted plants, they'll look the other way. And there'll never be any sort of retribution for this. There'll never be anything. That's just suddenly there'll be tens of thousands of drones up in the air watching what we do. Now, if you're not doing anything, you might say, I'm not doing anything. I don't care. Well, should we just throw out the whole Constitution? Should we just run by a new set of rules? What, what, what should we do? The Third Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Ninth Amendment were written to guarantee us the right to be left alone, meaning governments stay out of our face. We are living perfectly normal, lawful lives. We don't want you in our faces as we do it. Suddenly the government, silently from 30,000 feet above, is violating those, uh, those amendments. It is quite a thing. This is nothing more than the watchful eye of Big Brother keeping track of your every moment. 7 Action News reporter Julie Bonovich gives us a closer look at this high-tech system from Farmington Hills. Your attention, please. That voice you hear. Your attention, please. Came from this street light. Please stand by for a public safety announcement. In each lighting fixture or in each lighting pole, there's a processor very much like an, I, uh, like an iPhone. 
and it takes inputs and outputs, it talks back and forth, and the poles actually talk to each other. The ribbon is cut. Inventor Ron Harwood unveiled the intelligent light in a ribbon cutting ceremony. With funding help from the Department of Energy, Harwood's Farmington Hills company, Illuminating Concepts, started designing the wireless communication system after the horrors of September 11th and Hurricane Katrina. And it became really obvious to myself and my staff that we could do something that would make people more informed, make them safer. LED video screens and cameras add to the wireless infrastructure that is remotely controlled. It can provide entertainment, save energy, make announcements. This is a security alert. And it even counts people for police. When I come into view of that street light, when I look at that camera, the person on the other side sees the white specks and the black marks, sensing that somebody's there. And if they want, they can even take my picture. The system is also capable of recording conversations, making critics cry invasion of privacy. This is not a, a system with spook technology. It's uh, much more transparent. It, it can just talk to you and say, don't fall over Niagara Falls. The basic light starts at $3,000. And by spring of next year, there is a good chance you could see them popping up in your city. In Farmington Hills, Julie Bonovich, 7 Action News. Just last week, the U.S. Congress passed a bill uh, which repeals a plastic comitatus, which means that they, we have now uh, institutionalized and codified uh, martial law. Right now, the, the battle against uh, terrorism involves all of us. Everybody in this country is a potential terrorist. And the words that they use in there to bring everybody in as a potential terrorist is any associated forces, which means that if you happen to visit a website, happen to attend a meeting, happen to do a, one association, you can be accused of being a terrorist, and the bill says you have no right to a lawyer. They've been abusive of this for many years, but now it's been codified. And this president, just about a year ago, announced that some of these bad people, even though they're American citizens, don't deserve even charges that they can now be assassinated. We should be consciously aware of terrorism and deal with it, but to say that we're at war at, with the world and we can send a drone missile and send our troops any place we want is very, very dangerous. Endless wars, attack on civil liberties, this Patriot Act is not very patriotic, let me tell you. It's an invasion of your privacy, and I often wonder how many members of Congress would have voted for the Patriot Act if it would have been called the repeal of the Fourth Amendment. Big government is alive and well, but the grassroots are waking up. Big Brother loves you. No one